Here we are with section 3.11, molecular formulas. The molecular formula is the formula that shows you everything that is in that particular molecule. Okay, so this gives the actual number of atoms of each element in one molecule of a covalent compound. Okay, for example, one molecule of glucose. So this is that whole thing, that one molecule of glucose has six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. Now, the molecular formula is always an integer, always a whole number. So you'll never see something like C 3.7, H 4.9. You'll never see anything like that. It will be whole numbers. Um, they're whole number multiples of the empirical formula. So there's a relationship between the molecular formula and the empirical formula. And using those two with one another is something that, well, you definitely can do. Okay, so what we can compare is we can compare different molecules to one another. Acetylene and benzene. This is acetylene right here, C2H2. If you ever watch any uh, home improvement shows or anything like that, or if you are a welder yourself, you'll pro you're probably familiar with acetylene um, or an acetylene torch. Um, C6H6 is benzene. Okay, these both have the empirical formula of CH. They have the exact same percent composition. Their makeup is basically the same with respect to numbers of carbons to hydrogens and so forth. What sets them apart from one another, however, is the actual number of carbons and hydrogens in each respective molecule. There's two carbons in acetylene, there's two hydrogens in acetylene. There's six in six carbons and hydrogens respectively in benzene. So the molecular formula is always a multiple of the empirical formula. And so what you can do is you can figure out a multiplying factor to draw those connections. So you can take the molar mass of a compound, divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula and come up with your multiplying factor. Multiply all, once you have that multiplying factor, you multiply all subscripts by the factor to obtain the molecular formula. So in practice, what that's gonna look like is something like this. A 72.33 gram sample of a compound contains 28.9 grams of carbon, 4.86 grams of hydrogen, 38.57 grams of oxygen. If the molar mass of the compound is 60.05 grams, what is the molecular formula? In order to answer this question, the first thing that you have to do is you have to figure out the empirical formula. And then relate that to this known molar mass of the molecular formula. That will give you that, uh, that factor, that multiplying factor that you can then apply to all of the subscripts. Now we'll see all this played out right here. Okay, so what we've got is our mass, or our, yeah, our mass of carbon, 28.9 grams, to uh, that's converted into um, number of moles of carbon. 4.86 grams of hydrogen is converted into 4.82 moles of hydrogen. 38.56 or 57 grams of oxygen is converted into 2.411 moles of oxygen. So effectively, this gives us a molecule that's C2.406 to, or C2.406, H4.82, O2.411. And when you look at that, you know that this is not right because of the fact that, well, it's not whole numbers. But what you can do is determine a ratio. If you look at this, these are both basically 2.4 to 4.8. Well, heck. That's a ratio of two to one. So that means that there, are, just as there are 4.8 moles of hydrogen to every one mole of carbon and one mole of oxygen, that's a ratio of two to one. So we get this empirical formula of CH2O. Now, that's the first part, determining that empirical formula. The next part of this process is to determine, well, what's the empirical formula mass of that substance? Well, it happens to be 30.026 grams per mole. You take the molar mass, divide it by our empirical formula mass, 
And lo and behold, that gives us our multiplying factor. That multiplying factor is applied to each of the subscripts, which our subscripts were 1, 2, 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. And in the words of Ali G, booyah kasha. There you go. There's your answer. I hope this was helpful. This is not really trivial, but you've got some fundamental steps and fundamental skills that you've already been working on developing. So it takes a deliberate practice to do well on the, or to to succeed on these sorts of problems. All right, have a good one.